Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Engineer Fazli Karim, uh, and I am going to present the remaining part of the lecture named Brick, which has already been presented, uh, you know, to, and submitted to you guys through Suit Portal, uh, as well as uh, my through my WhatsApp group. Uh, and now uh, I am going to present, uh, you know, uh, the that part uh, which has not yet been taught. Uh, so I'm going to present the remaining part in today's lecture which starts from uh, molding uh, so first of all I would like to uh, let you know that uh, what is molding of bricks uh, so giving the required shape to the prepared brick earth is basically known as molding of bricks uh, and there are uh, basically two different ways of uh, doing it uh, one is hand molding uh, and the other is machine molding uh, and the relevant pick for both the processes you know uh, have been shown on the screen uh, now I would like to let you know what is mold uh, so molds are uh, basically rectangular boxes uh, made up of wood or steel uh, without top and bottom and the longer side projecting a few centimeters to act as handle uh, and these molds uh, can be prepared from steel as well as from uh, wood but the molds prepared from steel are much durable as compared to the molds prepared for uh, from wood now what is hand molding uh, the hand molding of uh, brick is extensively used in Pakistan uh, and this could be done on ground or on a table known, known respectively as ground molding and as table molding. Uh, bricks prepared by hand molding are you know of two types one is ground molded bricks and the other table molded bricks. Now what are ground molded bricks? Uh, or what is ground molding this method is adopted when a large and level area of land is uh, basically available uh, the area of land on which the molding is to be done is uh, first leveled plastered and uh, you know uh, uh, basically sand is also sprinkled uh, on the on that specified area uh, to prevent the molded bricks from sticking to the mold either sand is sprinkled on the inner side of the mold or the mold is dipped in water each time before the molding is done uh, when sand is used to prevent the sticking of earth to mold the molded bricks are known as sand molded and if the mold is dipped in you know water each time before molding a brick then the bricks are known as slope molded bricks sand molded bricks have you know usually better finish and sharper edges now what is table molded bricks uh, the process of molding you know these bricks uh, uh, is just exactly similar to the ground bricks but these bricks are uh, usually as you can see you know are molded on a table of size about 2 meter by 1 meter the remaining process is exactly the same as ground molding now what is machine molding uh, this method proves to be you know economical when bricks in huge quantity are to be uh, manufactured at the same spot it is harmful for you know uh, molding hot clay uh, and even uh, a machine uh, with an array uh, of you know uh, prepared bricks have also been uh, shown uh, now I would like to briefly uh, you know discuss uh, uh, the operational principle uh, you know of uh, the machine molding uh, the operational principle of this this machine and briefly is that uh, after you know uh, these have thoroughly pugged the soil and made a plastic mass of it then it is pushed under pressure through an opening whose length and breadth 
exactly you know equal to the length and breadth of the brick this pushed out you know plastic soil uh, uh, I mean uh, the soil which is used for preparation of bricks is basically plastic soil which can be molded into various shapes uh, is then cut uh, to the desired thickness of the bricks by you know wires fitted in a frame at a distance equal to the brick thickness uh, the next process uh, after preparation of bricks is drying before burning it is essential that the bricks have dried and have become sufficiently hard to be handled and staked in claims or kiln without getting damage also if the bricks have not completely dried then they are likely to get cracked and distorted when burned in the kiln the following points are kept in view to ensure you know successful completion of the drying operations number first as soon as the molded bricks becomes dry enough so that they do not get damage on handing they should be turned on edges and left for a day or two more to further harden number two they should then be staked in such a way that each brick gets full circulation of air all around it number three the drying area should be higher than the surrounding so that it does not get flooded due to any occasional rain number four a layer of sage should be you know a layer of sand should be spread at the drying area so as to keep it dry in wet weather number five to protect the drying bricks from damage caused by you know occasional rain temporary bamboo you know bamboo frames and uh, sulhi should be provided so these are the uh, you know uh, important points which are required to be kept in mind uh, you know during drying process now the next important uh, you know process after drying is uh, the burning process after the bricks have dried in sun these are burnt in kiln to make them harder stronger denser less absorbent and consequently more durable the bricks are burned either in you know claim or in uh, kiln and you know the relevant text for the burning have also been shown where burning of uh, you know uh, the bricks are in process uh, there are some special types of uh, bricks uh, used you know for particular purpose uh, in civil engineering structures so i would like to briefly describe bricks are made in a wide range of shapes to suit the requirement of the location where they are to be used special form of bricks may be needed due to structure consideration or for ornamental decoration as defined by the architect specially molded bricks avoid the process of cutting and rounding the rectangular bricks to the desired shape some of the special type of bricks commonly used are given below uh, this is squint brick and these bricks are made with angular corners uh, you know just to have oblique corners of a uh, wall here you can see that uh, uh, in you can see that an oblique uh, wall uh, you know has been shown and whenever this oblique wall is uh, required uh, that will be obtained by providing you know a squint brick uh, bull nose brick uh, these bricks are used uh, to form you know round corners various uh, you know uh, images of the bull nose bricks have been shown and this pick basically reflect the practical uses of the bull nose bricks uh, made up in strears but here uh, I would like to say that the bull nose you know aid basically uh, add no strength to the structure uh, you know uh, I mean it uh, the bull nose will give uh, 
the same strength uh, you know uh, is given by a simple brick but here uh, in this case the bull nose have only be used only for beautification or uh, ornamental purpose perforated bricks uh, these bricks may be standard size bricks produced with perforations running through their thickness and perforated bricks are easy to burn and their lightweight make it possible to reduce the weight of the uh, structures. Uh, actually these are bricks with perforations uh, which can be used for ventilation purpose and by using you know this type of perforated bricks it is easy uh, to have lightweight structure. Uh, use of perforated bricks mm, these are also you know uh, perforated bricks uh, used uh, in structures uh, which are you know uh, not too high just you know low buildings uh, Now the use of hollow bricks, uh, these are also the same as perforated bricks uh, like, uh, and with the help of you know these uh, bricks it is uh, very easy to have lightweight structure. Uh, these were but it is very important to note that uh, the hollow bricks can only be used uh, uh, you know for the partitioning wall but it cannot be used for the load bearing walls but here in this case perforated walls can be uh, used as a load bearing walls uh, but in low high but in low buildings not so high buildings but here hollow bricks can only be uh, used you know for the partitioning walls but not as a load bearing wall uh, circular bricks these bricks have internal and external faces corroded to meet the requirement of the particular curve and radius of the wall and these bricks are used for wheel towers uh, and chimneys here you can see the usage of circular bricks uh, used in chimneys uh, and can be used in you know uh, wheels uh, as well as in towers uh, the plinth brick these bricks are molded uh, in several pattern with the object of adding architecture beauty to the structure uh, used in doors and window gems in in plants capping brick uh, these bricks are manufactured in a variety of shapes to set the thickness of the wall uh, and it is used for the top course on the parapet wall to drain off rain water uh, and uh, it is basically uh, of the same size uh, I mean thickness is that of you know uh, parapet wall and it is uh, made up in the form of a course on the top of the parapet wall just to facilitate draining of you know rain water paving bricks these bricks are machine molded bricks specially uh, made for paving the surface of streets and highways uh, they are unaffected by weather and ordinary traffic wear. They are loaded on the bed of sand which rest on foundation of stones or uh, concrete. Uh, but uh, it is very important that uh, uh, some, you know, firm or solid foundation uh, will be required, you know, for providing uh, paving bricks. These are tests, some quality tests for bricks and a brick is generally subjected to the following test to find out its suitability for the construction work. Uh, number first is crushing strength, hardness, presence of soluble salt, shape and size and soundness. Compressive strength which is basically resistance to uh, compression uh, offered by you know brick. Mm, and the minimum and maximum limit of the crushing strength have also been shown. Hardness which is basically resistance to polishing or wear. Uh, so brick should have you know sufficient hardness 
you know against uh, polishing or wearing so no impression should be left on the surface of the brick when it is scratched with finger nail uh, the presence of soluble salt brick shouldn't absorb you know uh, salt when submerged in water for 24 hours the brick should not uh, show any gray or white deposit uh, shape and size it should be of standard size with sharp edges uh, and the brick should be sound the brick shouldn't give should give clear ringing sound when struck with each other so every day do something that will inch you closer to a better tomorrow thank you very much